YouTube, today we're going to be breaking down all the perks for you guys because I have a prediction that's going to change the game forever and it's coming in season five. Let's go. All right, you guys, so in today's video, we're going to be talking about perks. Perks are an essential thing to Warzone that in Season 5, we're given two new perks. It's the first time they've implemented perks into Warzone or really changed perks because we've only seen, I think, one change in the past, and I don't even remember what it was, so I don't think it was like a big change either. But essentially, we got Tempered, which is the plate one. You get two plates instead of three, and then Combat Scout, you get wall hacks, essentially. I'll talk about those a little bit more and where they're essential and where they're good, but there's a big change coming to Warzone, I think, because they're adding perks in the game that are more teamwork based. I think they're going to do a drastic change to the time to kill. That's my prediction. Just before I get into this, I'm going to talk about them in the current state, but I'll also mention what I think is going to happen with that time to kill nerf. So I think they're going to try to make it more of a team based game. So they're adding perks in there that like you'd want one person on your team to be running combat scout. You want the other person on your team running this and that and that. And I'll get to that as we go through this. But I think we are going to see this game change big time going forward with it's the only thing that makes sense when implementing some of these perks like combat scout is literally ridiculous. But before I do jump into today, guys, make sure you guys do drop a like on today's video, help the algorithm out a little bit, help people out because I'm usually on top of the meta and my predictions are pretty good. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't found me before because I do keep you guys on top of the metas on literally everything, guys. I do my best to keep you guys ahead of the game before anyone else can. And then comment below, guys, what you guys think about these new perks because they are kind of crazy and we'll get to those as we go into this. So let's jump into the perks, guys. All right, you guys, if you guys haven't been to one of my perk breakdowns before, essentially, I'm just going to go from perk one to perk two to perk three and just go down each and every one of these and tell you guys where they fall in season five. So... Essentially, double time has been the meta for season four, season three, and a little bit of season two for the most part for high end players, just because the slide cancel with that crouch movement speed, you don't really you don't really think about crouch walking, which that's not what it's used for. It's used for that slide cancel. The slide cancel is a lot smoother. If you guys haven't tried it out, go test it out. The slide cancel feels amazing. That's why people like Joe Woe, Swag, all those big names, they run these. But we're having a change here, guys. We'll get down to that in a second, but Actually, I'm just going to jump into it right now. Cold-Blooded. Cold-Blooded just had a big change. It negates Combat Scout, the new perk three. So if people are going to be running Combat Scout a lot, Cold-Blooded is basically essential because you do not want someone to have wall hacks on you. Like, literally, someone shoots you, and you can have wall hacks. So essentially, I think Cold-Blooded is a must used right now because everyone's gonna be using combat scout for the time being as time goes on we'll figure out the meta and how people are using it and how many people are using it and whatnot basically it'll be based off pro play because that's how most people like kind of find what they want to use and see what they want to do but i think cold blood is going to be essential starting right now just because i'm shooting people with combat scout across the map and you can just track them so easy like and then in rebirth rebirth you can literally shoot people through tents like in certain areas like it's ridiculous i've had a few clips where you can just destroy people so i think cold-blooded is absolutely essential eod at this point i don't think really many people are running it it's definitely like a good perk still but how often are you really dying to grenades and C4s and rocket launchers at this point the cold war rocket launcher is pretty good right now but not a lot of people are running it scavenger has never really been great in warzone kill chains never really been a thing it really only increases your chance of finding kill streaks and supply boxes so pointless and then quick fix it's good to get when you have specialist perk for that healing but you're never going to use it over any of these so realistically you have three choices double time eod cold-blooded i think cold-blooded is probably your number one priority and then double time and then eod Obviously, if you're like a camper and you want to be in buildings and like you're afraid of getting hit by grenades and stuff like that, EOD is going to be your your favorite. But if you're out there running people around and trying to make crazy plays happen and not play them, look like Joe Well, the movement king, double time is going to be your move. But I think right now with this new perk and it just being like a new add to the game, cold blood is going to be your choice here. Perk 2 is where it gets really interesting because obviously everyone takes overkill on their first loadout because you want to have that submachine gun and AR or sniper and submachine gun whatever your preferred combo is, you want to have those two weapons. But your second loadout, you've always had so many choices. So let's jump into here and we'll break all these down for you really quickly. Restock, it's always been made for those people that like to run stuns. Myself, I am a heartbeat player, but 
my teammates are usually stun players. So I know my spot. I'm supposed to be using my heartbeat to let them know where they're at. It's just how I like to play. I've learned from people like Tommy and whatnot. It's just usually more consistent to run heartbeat. But you hit someone with a stun in this game, you guys know how it feels to be stunned for like eight seconds. It sucks. I don't know what the actual time is it on a full stun, but it feels like forever. It's literally impossible. It's free kills. Literally, if you hit someone with a stun, free kill. So restock has always been a great option i think it's very much in the meta currently in that second loadout like i was saying beforehand you're going to be taking overkill let me remember that like when i'm judging these like you're getting overkill first box still it's the second box next we have hardline hardline you only get 25 percent off kiosk prices for kill streaks field upgrades and armor plates you're never going to use it it's probably the worst one on this one to be honest tempered is the new one they just added where essentially if you guys don't know what it does yet Go look up a clip, but you get two plates instead of three plates, and each plate's worth 75 instead of 50. It's really self-explanatory. Some people were trying to make it like super confusing, but basically you're just putting two plates in and you get the same amount of health. So you get a save plates by you only have to put two in instead of three, and then you can heal up quicker because you're only putting two in instead of three. So I think there is a great spot in this game for it. If you get specialist, which I did luckily in a game earlier today, it feels great because you get all the perks when you have specialists. So it felt amazing to have all these other perks with it, but I don't think it's like a priority right now. Ideally, you could like use it in like rebirth or something like that where you need more plates. It's really good in plunder. If you guys are a plunder player because getting how often do you have plates in plunder? Not that often. So that one plate giving you that extra 25 health or if you want to you get lucky and have two plates, you only have to put two on and you get full health. So I think there's a good place for it in plunder, but in Warzone currently, I don't think it's going to be like meta. I think it's nice and there's a good spot for it. Like you can mix it in, but I think there's a couple other perks here that are a little bit more important, like restock and ghost in my opinion. But that's not the only change here. We already talked about overkill. Like you guys know what overkill is. You take two primary weapons. I'm not, I'm not going into that. If you don't know about it, just do it on the first box and you'll like put it on and you'll see that you can put an SMG and an AR on. But high alert guys actually just got a giant buff this season. So it wasn't in the patch notes, but high alert now here's people using dead silence. So this is where I really think they're trying to make this a team game because 99% of the world if you guys don't know what high alert is, basically when someone aims in on you, you get like a big yellow spot on the side of the screen that someone's shooting at you or aiming in at you at with. So you know exactly where they're at, which is amazing, especially when you have like specialists. But now you can hear people. So they really want people to have this. So in my opinion, if they make this a team-based game where the time to kill is a bit slower and all that good stuff, I think someone on your team is going to need to run this because there's nothing worse than someone sneaking up on you with Deddy and then... You can let someone know on your team along with the daddy is you'd be like that support player that's going to give you all the information like you know where people are going to be aiming at you from all that good stuff so i think a high alert at the moment is on the back burner but i think there is a spot for it eventually if they do raise that time to kill because that that, that support player is going to be essential if they do make that big change and then we have ghost guys i think ghost is personally the best one in the class just because it's just consistent like no one can see on uavs you know it no one can see on heartbeat sensors and no one can see on radar drones which is the big ones there obviously radar drones are pretty irrelevant but the heartbeat sensors and the uavs are the big ones because people are trying to track you down the good players in the game can't see you from their uavs so it's pretty self-explanatory it's very easy and i would take it 99 percent of the time for my gameplay because i run a heartbeat sensor if you run a restock and you want to run stuns and all that good stuff go for it but most people run ghost and then Point Man has a weird one in the game because if you guys don't know what Point Man is, I, most people probably don't, is all members of your team earn more money from completed missions, no affected war zone rumble. I have heard crazy things where people that really want to win games take Point Man and basically just get all their stuff and then camp. You can get crazy amount of killstreaks and you can do all this stuff and then just camp, win end game, game over. So there is a place in the game for it. I have personally never taken it but i have heard from people like op marked and iron that it is a legitimate thing that you can do to help you accelerate yourself to that end game so you can really get yourself in a safe spot in the zone so there's definitely a good spot for that one but realistically this comes down to in this point in time in season five ghost and restock you guys make your decision on it there's no right or wrong one it just matters on your play style at the end of the day high alert like i said is on that back burner for the time being because of the potential time to kill buff so or nerf or whatever you want to call it 
it's going to be there. The support player, I think, is going to fall into it at some point. And comment in the comments below when I am right on this, by the way, because I really do think it is something they're going to do. Going into perk three today, pretty interesting one here, if you ask me. We have Tune Up, which was like the go-to at the beginning because you reduce the revive time by 25%. And then everyone just switched to Amped. Like everyone. Like no one has used anything else other than Amped, other than people that run Tracker. So Amped, if you didn't know, you basically just swap your weapons faster and you re reload rocket launchers faster. So, But it's made to get to your secondary quicker. Most... 99% of the game runs amp just because you can get to it quicker. But with Combat Scout being added, I think that Combat Scout is just so broken right now because you can see people across the map when you tag them. So even if you're 5,000 meters away, which obviously it's hard to get 5,000 meters on that map, but if you tag them with a bullet, you can literally see an entire red outline of this person. See them through walls, see them through everything. So you can track people like crazy from long distance. I noticed in that like... 100 meter to 200 meter range like it is way easier to hit shots and then if you're playing on like rebirth island or something like that where you're shooting through tents and stuff and you're getting weird angles and like different spots in the map shooting through walls in regular war zone there's a, a clip that symphony put in there it was just ridiculous where it looked like he was aimbotting but it's literally just this perk you hit one bullet on him you can see him through walls so it's really easy and like raises your chances of winning that gunfight by like infinity and beyond so I think it's way more important to run that right now until everyone starts switching to cold-blooded because it does get negated by cold-blooded, like I said earlier. So if I would run Combat Scout literally every game right now until you notice people running cold-blooded. I haven't noticed anyone really switching to that yet because people are obsessed with double time, but I would say this is your number one priority right now at number three or perk three. Sharp now, it's good enough. I don't think it's worth it in my opinion because you just get an extra piece of lethal equipment and explosive damage delays enemy health regeneration so at the end of the day it's okay but i wouldn't ever run it there's just better ones like combat scout and amp are just more consistently you're going to be using them like how often are you really hitting people with grenades and killing them like to delay their health not very often battle harden I wish this was stronger. I would love to see a buff to this because realistically, stuns are like super annoying, but Battle Harden really doesn't do enough in a Warzone situation because if someone hits you with a the stun, they're probably going after you right away and you're still stunned even with Battle Harden. So if they were to buff this and make it like you get hit by a stun, it doesn't do anything, there would be so many counterplay options because people would have to start playing smarter and safer if they're hitting their stun grenades because right now, if you hit a stun grenade, you just run in and just kill people instantly. So I would love to see it get buffed to where they run in on you, but you're not stunned, but they think you're stunned, so you just kill them. So there's a lot of cool things that could happen with that, but apparently they haven't even thought about it. So I'm interested on that one. Spotter, so literally irrelevant. It's nice to have it when you have specialists, but how often are you really worried about hacking people's claymores and like seeing people's stuff? Like there's usually like that one to two camping teams that you run into like that are just absolutely camping with eight claymores and all that stuff like once a night, but that's once a night. So I don't think it's really worth it. And then trackers that one where it's kind of nice to have someone on your team running tracker. My buddy Nick likes to run it for us and you can just chase down people very easily. I can't like, just go hide in a corner and just you miss them for no reason if they have ghosts or something like that. It's just nice to be able to track people down. But at the end of the day, I would probably say in my if I'm ranking this perk, I'd probably go Combat Scout, Amped, and then Tracker. So it's just very situational to run Tracker at the end of the day. The other ones, they're really not that great at this point in time. And I would love to see that Battle Hard and uh, buff. That would be so much fun in my opinion. But that would mean we'd have to raise the skill gap, which means they'd have to raise the time to kill, which means I would be completely correct about my prediction. So we will see what ends up happening with that, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy today's perk breakdown. I try to get through it as quick as possible for you guys. If you guys did like it, make sure you guys do drop a subscription or a subscribe or a sub, whatever you want to call it, to the channel to find your way back for more content. Like the video and comment below, guys. I would love to hear what you guys think about the new perks so much. Appreciate the heck out of you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day and peace out.